Hi guys, uh, welcome to the last minute tips to crack uh, SNAP 2016. Uh, the objective of today's session is basically going to be to look at some of the, uh, you know, tricks uh, and tips uh, by which you could probably, uh, you know, score a couple of extra marks when it comes to SNAP 2016. Um, what we'll do is we'll take you through uh, the analysis of the last year paper. Uh, and then we'll probably look at a comparison of snap 14 is to snap 15 and then probably set the base for what we expect in snap 16 and how one should approach it and what would be a good strategy of attempting the paper. So that's basically what uh, today's session will entail. Let's get started. Uh, this is basically the snap 2015 uh, you know paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, each section in snap 2015 and uh, then we'll come up to you know what uh, 14 is to 15 was and then we'll talk about the 16 paper format and how to approach that. In snap 2016 the number of questions in verbal is same as that in 2015 which is basically 40 questions. As you can see in 15 the focus if I look at uh, you know uh, the questions in verbal were basically on vocabulary which had about 15 questions so that's uh, you know a very good proportion of the total number of questions that uh, came in the section about 37.5 percent. Uh, analogy had five questions. Uh, you look at idioms which can again probably fall under the vocabulary domain so if I look at it that's about 19 questions out of 40. You had FIB again vocabulary based and you had FIB grammar based. So if I look at the different ways in which vocabulary came up, there are about 21 questions, which is almost like, uh, you know, roughly about 50% uh, of the entire paper focused on vocab. The good thing about this, um, you know, snap is that the vocabulary is simple and not too difficult. So you can just, uh, you know, uh, basic vocabulary knowledge if you have, you'll be able to, you know, kind of solve these questions. Another thing to realize is that the questions, um, you know, uh, might be expressed in different formats and not, you know, straight away being given as antonym, synonym and so on and so forth. However, uh, the options are also not very close together. So elimination does help. There is a particular kind of, uh, you know, question which uh, Snap generally loves, which is the tabular matching question, which is like, you know, they might give you a table, uh, two columns and they will give you say 10 words here and 10 meanings here and then ask you to match something like that and there'll be options uh, stating the correct um, uh, you know matching uh, pairs and that is where you know uh, elimination really helps you out so even if you know the meaning of say two or three words you can really go ahead and you can uh, probably get uh, you know the correct option from that so do focus on it and don't really worry too much about the kind of words that might crop up because they are not very difficult um, if I go uh, you know on further you see that uh, the grammar based questions are not too many there is uh, there are two here and spot the error is also basically English usage and grammar so there are about seven questions here they are very simple um, <coughs> however last year the grammar based fill in the blank wasn't that simple uh, you know, it was like it was slightly on the difficult side, but in general, when it comes to snap, you know, it's not very difficult. And even if it is difficult, the options are such that you can eliminate. So do focus a lot on elimination. You know, it becomes very important. And if I just want to stretch this further, you know, English usage and grammar, you can even say sentence correction kind of falls into that parameter. One good thing about uh, snap is that out of the 40 questions, you know, there are not very many RC questions. So it's not that you'll be spending a lot of time reading RCs. You generally have one question on RC as was the case last year as well. Uh, one uh, RC set, uh, one RC passage with five questions. It might take you about three to four minutes to read because, uh, you know, it wasn't very easy to read as has been pointed here. You know, it was slightly difficult to read, but the questions are factual and easy in nature. So you can go ahead and do that. So if I look at the verbal section overall, in general about 15 to 20 minutes, you know, for an attempt of roughly 30 to 32, uh, you know, uh, this is sufficient uh, amount of time to attempt 30 to 32 questions. So, uh, you know, if you're looking at say about 80-85% accuracy, this should kind of suffice. Okay, so that's generally about the verbal section. Let's move on. Uh, quant. Uh, you know, uh, this section, uh, even last year when the paper was slightly odd and, uh, you know, weird, this section wasn't too difficult. As you can see, it was easy to moderate. Just about four or five questions which were tricky and most of them were quite simple. Uh, if I look at, uh, you know, the number of questions which came from arithmetic, percentages, PL, ratio proportion, TSD, averages, um, 
and uh, the age problem so that's 1 2 5 uh, 6 9 and 13 so 13 questions from there 8 questions from number systems so arithmetic plus number systems again roughly dominated and that was about 50% of the paper just like in verbal you know vocabulary was 50% of the paper once again if you just look at the level of difficulties of all these questions everything here is easy to moderate nothing really difficult even the age problem so these 20 to 21 questions were absolute sitters any student who's done level 1 questions of your test gym uh, you've gone through your mocks and stuff you will not really have any issues here so don't worry too much they'll be simple another thing to notice is that you know there are not very many questions that come from DI there was one DI pie chart, pie chart question and you know that was also simple in general in DI you'll either get pie chart or bar graph or you'll get a tabular question and it won't be very difficult if I have to look at you know questions which might be slightly on the difficult side there was nothing per se just that geometry and mensuration were not as easy as the other questions so and also one thing to notice is that out of 40 questions just about 2-3 questions from geometry so geometry is not something which they really focus on but as was the case this year you know even in cat where suddenly uh, you know fr from last year where they had just two or three questions in geometry this year they went up till about seven eight so you never know things might change the only uh, thing that you should basically be worried about is the level of difficulty and you should focus on one aspect till now you know snap has never given very difficult quant sections uh, but as was noticeable in IAFT, reasoning had never been difficult, but this year reasoning turned out to be slightly tricky. So utilizing the first five minutes when you're scanning through the paper is going to be very important to understand whether quant this year is going to be, you know, at par with how it has been over previous years or there is going to be a slight change. So do make sure that you utilize the first four, five minutes of your paper to judge the level of difficulty of each section. Okay, so overall if I look at the quant section as well, I'd say if you can give yourself roughly about 50 minutes once again to do about 30 to 32 questions. The thing here is in quant you should be looking at higher accuracy, so about 90% accuracy. Uh, let's move on to reasoning. Last year, this is the section which, you know, kind of turned out to be a game changer. If you suddenly start looking at the difficulty level here, you will see a lot more, uh, you know, uh, usage of the word difficult. Look at analogy and CR, which is verbal logic. Uh, again, statement argument, which is again verbal logic. We are, so these are all, uh, you know, verbal uh, logic questions, which was slightly on the difficult uh, side. If I look at uh, coding, decoding and series questions were not very simple, again, moderate to difficult. In general, if you look at moderate to difficult or difficult questions, there were 5 to 7, 9, 10, 12. So 12 out of 40 questions were moderate to difficult. That is roughly 30%. So 30% of the paper being moderate to difficult automatically means that if a person had been able to judge that, they would have realized and also remember one thing last year, every question carried two marks and there were 30 questions. This year there will be 40 questions in reasoning, each question carrying one mark. So last year 12 questions on the difficult side meant 24 marks which would have automatically told somebody that vis-a-vis -vis 2014. Uh, 24 marks were going to be on the difficult side so overall cutoff if you are looking at you could have easily stated that 10 to 12 mark fall just due to the reasoning section was 100% you know going to happen and as you might remember or as most of you all might have observed there was a fall of roughly about 26 to 27 marks overall so that means 10 to 12 is something that you could have judged but the actual fall perhaps due to reasoning might have been somewhere around 18 to 20 marks so do keep that in mind and you know realize that you know going through the paper going through each section and understanding whether the level of difficulty is high or low is paramount because that is what is going to help you understand what a good score in the paper would be in general you know blood relation and tree based questions always come do focus on that seating arrangement always comes linear arrangement always comes. the seating might be linear or circular so do keep that in mind uh, mathematical kind of questions which are straight on you know uh, simple mathematical uh, questions which could have even gone uh, been uh, you know which could have even been pushed to the quant section do come up there'll be about three to four of them and selection questions also come so overall if I look at it you know uh, the matrix kind of questions which are found uh, you know uh, a plenty in cat might not be something that you see here 
you know so many women so many men uh, so much of uh, you know these companies uh, so many cars and then mapping who is married to whom has which car which company he works in all that might generally not come in snap you know it won't be very complicated and even if it does there won't be more than two to three things that you'll be mapping so in general the reasoning section has not been difficult but last year was difficult and it was a game changer this year when we are going from 30 to 40 questions you expect the level of difficulty to come down the two markers have also become one marker so do focus on that another thing to realize that in la in the last year paper the visual reasoning questions that came up which were also you know uh, in series or selection whichever way you want to look at it they were not very simple some of them were almost like whatsapp jokes wherein you know four uh, smileys or emotic or four different emoticons were kept and you had to basically guess what they are talking about and then uh, they were also used in analogy kind of questions so you know it's not necessary that analogy will always be verbal reasoning it could also be visual reasoning so do keep yourself open to it go through the mocks go through the last year uh, you know uh, memory based paper to get a good idea of what the section was like gk well you really don't need to focus a lot in this section uh, uh, regarding cat 2015 uh, the reason being if you look here 12 questions were from static that means about 28 questions were from current affairs this year gk completely changes and you're only going to get current affairs that also just the last two years so that means all 40 questions will be current affairs as you can see here the current affairs were broken up very nicely into polity geography history economy miscellaneous miscellaneous might entail you know business it might entail uh, you know sports uh, it might entail a little bit of literature so it could entail a load number of things your basic focus needs to be that you go through the gk compendium snap gk compendium that has been uploaded in your sis utilize that uh, you know in order to ensure that you can go ahead and attempt something like uh, i would say spend not more than 8 to 10 minutes here and look at attempting something like say about 20 to 22 questions that is if you're good in this section and you you think you can maximize when it comes to current affairs if you're not very good don't spend more than four to six minutes and probably look at you know attempting about eight to ten questions wherein you can say get about six correct and say about four incorrect so even that will suffice do remember that there is no sectional cutoff when it comes to snap one thing which i might have missed when it comes to the reasoning section is how you should go about attempting it in general 40 to 45 minutes uh, if the paper is not like last year but something similar to what it has been from uh, you know snap 2012 to 2014 you should be able to attempt roughly about 28 to 30 questions in 40 to 45 minutes and again you should be looking at a high accuracy of 90 percent plus moving on in general uh, if i look at it uh, you know snap 2015 was slightly on the uh, you know um, difficult uh, side and slightly weird uh, but let me compare that to say uh, you know snap 2014 don't get confused with these minus signs these are not minus this is basically just trying to tell you what the cutoff was so in case you're getting confused let me just get rid of all these minus signs this is not minus score this is 20 28 and so on and so forth don't get confused by it okay so uh, basically last year if you look at it the cutoff from where you know in 2014 it was say about 97.75 percentile this is the percentile cutoff and this was at a score of say about 95 96 that from there it went down to about 68.5 a drop of say about 26 27 marks as we spoke about so th that is where you know understanding how difficult a paper is becomes very very important another thing to notice is that you know when it comes to SIBM and SCMHRD the cutoff is generally about 2 to 5 marks from SCMHRD to SIIB again about 5 to 7 marks uh, category students you know you should really go out and give it your all because as you can see the cutoff for SIBM Pune for ST students is very low it's just about 24 percentile do keep in mind that this is the percentile and this is marks this is 15 and this is 14 La, in about in about 14 the percentile is to marks you know they were very close together so a 97 was roughly about about 95 96 a 24 was roughly at about you know 30 32 uh, that also went down to say about 20 so you know category students should look at maximizing uh, the number of uh, attempts and you know the cutoff is not very high so you have a very good chance what is more important now is basically to look at snap 2016 two days to go 
this is the paper pattern this remains exactly same as last year exactly same as last year this is where the change occurs 10 lesser questions and 10 higher number of questions so minus 10 here and plus 10 here um, another thing is there is a loss of roughly about 20 marks here and loss of about 10 marks here because last year when there were 30 questions they were all of 2 marks or 60 marks now that has come to 40 40 into 1 this was 40 into 1 40 now it's come down to 30 into 1 so 30 marks is what you go by down by so if the level of difficulty of the paper is something akin to 2012 to 2014 well, uh, then you can probably expect the cutoff to come down by say about 10 marks. You could expect 85 to 87 could be a, to be a good score for SIBM Pune. And accordingly, it will fall down for SCMHRD and SIIB. And accordingly, it will fall down for category students. In, so my take for SNAP 2016 and as to how I would attempt the paper is, I'll start with reasoning. I'll give myself about 40 to 45 minutes aim to score 30 aim to solve 30 to 32 questions at about 90 percent accuracy i will go on to verbal you know or you might call it english or verbal reasoning whatever again i would give myself not a lot of time probably 15 to 20 minutes and verbal kind of acts as a barrier between logical reasoning and quant it helps you relax and cool down so that is why i always uh, you know try to take it up as a second section and i would here again go ahead and try to attempt 30 to 32 questions probably a little higher accuracy might be slightly on the lower side at about 80 percent then i would go ahead to the quant section and give myself roughly about 45 to 50 minutes Again, do somewhere around 28 to 30 questions and get about 90% accuracy. Then move on to the GK section. Give myself about 5 to 7 minutes because I'm not good at GK and I don't really stress a lot on it. If you're good at GK, this should go up and become 10 to 12. In 5 to 7 minutes, I'll do about 10 to 12 questions. This will be at about 60% accuracy. Overall, if I look at it in logical reasoning, I'll probably be looking at a score of 29 plus. In verbal, probably at about 26 plus. In quant, again, roughly at about 26 plus. And, you know, in GK, say about 6. So if you add it, that's about 69, 75, 81. That's about 87. So come what may, worst case scenario, if my attempts are just limited to these, even then I'm looking at a score of roughly about 87, right? Um, so uh, did I calculate correctly? That's 69, 75, 81, 87. Yeah. So, you know, even then, if you look at it, when I'm not really exerting myself a lot, I'm just concentrating on the nitty gritties, uh, not really concentrating on the nitty gritties, just looking at it overall, using the first five, seven minutes to judge the paper, I still have a very good opportunity of kind of going ahead and clearing the cutoff. So that is basically it from my end when it comes to, uh, you know, um, uh, snap 2016 all the very best uh, and you know in case you have any issues uh, you know do ping me uh, thank you very much